Green infrastructure is really a way to try to mimic nature in managing stormwater. And when we started this initiative back in 2002, we really wanted to try to manage stormwater in a, a more holistic fashion so that we weren't just putting it into a pipe, sending it to a river and you know, causing problems downstream. Our first steps were really to put out a lot of pilot projects. We wanted it to be more for stormwater, but we're starting to see people buy into the approach because there are these other benefits. It's cost effective. Treating wastewater uses a lot of energy. So we're going to reduce our energy footprint, which reduces our greenhouse gas emission footprint. We're getting excitement from other partners from other parts of the region, and it's just been phenomenal. I'm starting to see a whole new energy with some of the new hires that we've, we've found. There's people that are coming here, and I'll ask them. I meet with them on their first day, and I say, why, why did you want to come and work at Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District? And they'll say, because of your sustainability plan. The things you're doing are sustainable. The green infrastructure, the economic approach that we've taken with things. So I've actually seen it as a, a great tool for hiring some really great people. Rain barrels was one of the first things that we did where we said, okay, it's easy, it's understandable, and it's visible. In this region, we've installed over 16,000 rain barrels since 2002. And, you know, a lot of it's just word of mouth. It's not like we're running banner headlines on the evening news. People really want to try to improve their environment, and so this is a way they can do that. And then green roofs. We've got, I think, over 10 acres of green roofs in the region right now. And people wonder why a sewer district would be installing green roofs. We've, we paid for 70 to 80 percent of all the green roofs. The reasoning for that is all that water that falls on those roofs is flowing through a pipe into a storm sewer system. How can we slow that down? How can we use nature to kind of hold that, that water back? And what we're starting to see now is science that's telling us a green roof will reduce our air conditioning costs in the summer. And you can probably store about three quarters of an inch of rainfall on a green roof. So you start adding up these numbers and all of a sudden you're thinking, wow, there's a couple hundred gallons of water that I've been able to manage without causing harm downstream. We're also seeing beyond just the economics um, a number of benefits, um, whether it's reducing the urban heat island effect um, when you have a green roof or reducing your heating and cooling costs with a green roof, or it could be the economic benefits of green infrastructure in general. Green infrastructure tends to be more beautiful, more aesthetically pleasing, and that can increase property values. Today, it's an easy sell. You know, you go out and say, we want to put a green roof up. Oh, great. You know, that's super. Or we want to do a rain barrel program. Oh, that's great. We also started working with the Conservation Fund on a program called Green Seams, where we're purchasing buffers along the waterways to keep it from becoming impervious cover. And what we found over the years is we encased these rivers in concrete. And when we did that, we built houses right up to the very edge of that creek or that river. The problem with that is when the storms start to get larger, like we're seeing now, we're starting to see flooding in these homes. So we've used a watershed approach on our, our flood management. We're taking concrete lining out. We're naturalizing the, the liner. We have salmon starting to migrate up Connecticut River again, which they haven't done since the concrete liner's been in place and we're acquiring the properties that are built right up to the edge of the creeks and to the rivers. And we're actually deconstructing those homes. We're taking that material, reusing it, reselling it, and uh, putting a lot of people back to work as well, really low-income people. So this helps the economy. It helps the environment by keeping it out of the landfill. And here's people that have jobs. Now we're starting to revegetate that property. Originally, we started that program for flood management, trying to reduce flooding but now we see the benefits of reducing pollutants getting into the waterways. So again, multiple benefits, and um, it's a great thing. The initiatives in the region for installing porous pavement are mostly on parking lot type uh, areas. Uh, we do have a recent project that the city of Milwaukee just put in, which is a, a green alley. And then at one of our flood management projects, there's a, a large parking area that we had to reestablish. It's a way to mimic nature and allow that water to infiltrate into the ground as opposed to running off. And it's visible. It's something that's right there in front of people. And then bile swales, which are a low area that will allow water to run through it but it has natural plants that have deep roots in them so that water will infiltrate as well. 
there's another economic engine that's building in Milwaukee, and it's the urban gardening effort. We've been selling rain garden plants to our constituents every year, and a rain garden is just a deeply tilled area where water can infiltrate into the ground so it's not running off into the sewer system. So how does that help with stormwater management? Well, then you take a cistern or a rain barrel, you capture that water off the roof, and you use it to water the gardens. It's just the right way to do it. People have had cisterns as long as man's been around, you know, catching water and using it in areas where they didn't have water. It's not new technology, it's not highly engineered technology, it's just common sense. You know, we don't have a consent degree, we don't have a regulatory requirement to do this. This is Milwaukee, and Milwaukee is um, a very good place to live for the environment.